Hey, welcome back to Diabolic Shrimp, the least professional talk show on the internet. I'm your host, best-selling author, comic creator, and video game designer, Josh Grant. And uh, uh, today uh, we have our special guest. It's actually, we're kind of filming in a different way today, which is awesome. And so our special guest is actually already on here. Um, we have Mark Dotson. Mark, welcome to Diabolic Shrimp. Hey, how you doing, Josh? I am doing fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I told Mark already, uh, I released my zombie comic today, Another Zombie Apocalypse, and then hey. I get to talk to Mark Dotson. So it's like it's like Christmas all around. And, and Mark is Santa Claus here, or, or, or like I said, the drunk uncle that showed up. Or, or, or the drunk the drunk Santa Claus. Yeah. I think would be like. <laughs> the very true. I was like, Man, what do you very, want for Christmas? Right, right, Have good, some God. scotch. <laughs> so, right. As we just right. got like demonetized probably from like youtube <laughs> so well mark... no not butterscotch just scotch <laughs> you know? right and so well mark uh it's fantastic having you on for our audience uh our audience never gets to uh see you they might not be seeing you now they might just be hearing you but uh but mark uh, uh mark was uh in uh, he, uh mark did all sorts of wonderful parts uh uh he was in uh star wars like return of the jedi star wars uh uh the force uh, uh i almost said the force unleashed uh the force awakens uh oh, i he... like the, I like the Force uh, Force Unleashed. I like oh, that. I like that one too. He played Star yeah. Killer in the Force Unleashed. No, I'm just joking. And yeah, so, right. uh, <laughs> very solid source here, and then uh, uh, yeah, played all sorts of other parts, Gremlins. And so we're going to go into some of those parts with Mark today, uh, and kind of walk through uh, what I consider to be some of his more iconic roles, and then maybe some of his lesser known roles as we go. And so we have several of those down the way. If you're watching this and just want to see those, feel free to skip ahead. Uh, Feel free to drop a comment in the comments below. I love to share those with our guests. And so uh, the nice ones anyway. Uh, so so yeah. save all your mean comments for, <laughs> for later. I won't I won't tell him. I promise. Oh, and I, so... don't, I don't mind. I, you know, all right. Only I, send your mean comments. <laughs> yeah, send the mean ones. They're, they're more fun. Really. <laughs> Oh, well, Mark, it's it's so it's uh, so fantastic having you on. Uh, I got to meet you years ago at, at Comic-Con and uh, and it was just such a, a joy to uh, get to talk to you. You shared a bit about your story of becoming a, a voice actor and um, and uh, and getting into the role. And it was just really inspiring. My brother. Uh, just became a voice actor. Uh, Sever Truth, if anyone's looking for a voice actor, uh, but he uh, he he was really inspired by by you and some of that advice and some of your story of of getting into it. So uh, so I, I'm curious from you, um, uh, uh, like like how did you get started in the business? Wow, that's I mean that's a that's a wide open. Where do we begin? So <laughs> uh, for me. Um, because you're talking about the voice part of it, but that wasn't the intent. Um, I, I grew up in the sixties. So uh, we were in, you know, we were into the old stuff. Like, you know, we were into the old horror movies, Bela Lugosi, um, uh, Lon Chaney. Ooh, Lon, Lon Chaney's from Colorado uh, Springs where I live actually. And so, <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Vincent Price, who was actually from uh, St. Louis, where I was born. Um, we we're into him. We're in, you know, all the all the old stuff. We we're into Charlie Chaplin. We we're in, So I mentioned Chaplin because <clears throat> so what happened? Uh, my dad and my parents were, were into they love the arts and they were very much into movies that were coming out. And so um, there was a there was a festival in St. Louis. Uh, it was a Charlie Chaplin film festival. And every Sunday uh, for a couple months in the summer, they would show at the Esquire Theater, they would show the Cha old Chaplin movies. And you could go see them on Sunday morning, which I wish they would do that again in theaters. You know, Sunday morning when there's not a lot going on in the theater, they would they would show they would do a festival. Um, they would do a Hitchcock festival there. But anyway, they did. And I, I went to several of them with my dad. My dad would take my sister and I. And I was around 10 years old. And we went to the Chaplin Festival. And I, I just fell in love with Chaplin. Like, I just loved his stuff. And um, at some point, I, I thought because and I know I remember why, because with Chaplin, it was the first time I ever experienced he could make me laugh and cry all in the same movie his stuff was so moving um he was he was amazing and i remember thinking i would love to 
be a film director and make movies like that someday to because I always felt like he helped me feel things that I didn't even know I felt. And I thought it would be so cool to to, to give that to people. Um, so I decided I wanted to be a, a film director someday. And I was like 10 years old. And then on my own, you know, I started, I asked for a, I wanted an eight millimeter camera. I got that one year. Um, then I would make my own little films. Um, Do you still have I, some of those films? I don't. Oh, no, that's too bad. No, none of that. Yeah, that stuff. Who knows where all that stuff went? I moved around a lot, you know. Well, so then when so then I decided I was definitely going to work in film behind the scenes. Um, and there was a lot, you know, I loved Hitchcock, I loved Chaplin, um, I loved uh Peck and Paw, um so many. I mean, I could go on and on, but I decided I'm going to work in the film business. So at 18, when I graduated high school that summer, August, uh, we got done in June and August, I moved to California and I wanted to get in the film business. And in those days, that would have been in 1978. So back in those days, it was kind of like if, if you really wanted it and you went there and you met the right people, you might be able to get a job, you know, you might start out uh, emptying trash or working in the mail room or, you know, parking cars or whatever at a studio. And if they liked you, they'd probably bring you along and, you know, start you out in production as a production assistant. And because I, my, my father told me, you're going to have to pay for your own schooling for your own college. And I thought, well, I, I don't want to do it that way. How about I just go get a job at a studio? And then they can pay me while I'm learning. So that was that was really what, what my thinking was. And I went out there. I ended up getting in with Lucasfilm. Um, I got there. I got there in 78, uh, 1980. I got in because I met some people, just like I said, who worked for Lucasfilm. And we became friends. And, and um, so they were we were in L.A. and they were getting ready to move people up to Marin County. And I said, well, I want to move up there and maybe I could get a job up there doing anything. And they said, well, right now they're actually they're looking for carpenters and laborers to build the Skywalker Ranch. And maybe you go up there with us and, you know, something opens up in production and we could bring you over. So I said, OK. And that's what I did. That's that's and that's I, that's just incredible to me. It's like it's kind of funny. It's like, uh, you know, just how it goes, because it's like you know, people here nowadays, like Skywalker Ranch, and it's this big like yeah. thing. And in those days, you were helping helping to build that. So so you you helped to build, uh, build literally build Skywalker Ranch. So here's some pictures of Skywalker Ranch. Uh, we're going to assume that Mark built all of these. <laughs> Just no, kidding. And Mark so, did not build all of hey, those. He definitely Mark, did. Mark He's lying to you. And so, so actually, what were what were actually what were you working on while you were there, like uh, in carpentry? Well, let me say this, even though you're showing those pictures, it they first put me at Kerner, okay. which was it was called the Kerner Company. So nobody knew what it was, but that was ILM. And then we were building sound stages. So ILM was already there when I got there in San Rafael, California, okay. which, is Northern, which is Marin. And so they put me out there and I started out as a laborer and I, I literally uh, helped. I always said I carried in the lumber and carried out the sawdust uh, for the first studio that I ever recorded in with Ben Burr. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, so, so I was there. And then when, when we, when, when, when my part got done in the labor department and they were doing all the finishing and they're like, okay, we're going to move you out to Skywalker now. They want you out there, but we're going to make you an apprentice carpenter. And I was like, okay, great. So I became an apprentice carpenter. And what I worked on out at Skywalker Ranch was the main house. Okay. I yeah, and we, did, we just showed that... a picture of that too. And so <laughs> that's, that's cool. Okay, good. good. Yeah. So I worked on the main house. Incredible. 50,000 square foot Victorian. Uh, all, and it really is a Victorian, like as if it were built in the late 1800s. I mean, a two by four is. Oh, two I, inches I, by I thought four I thought you built it in the late 1800s. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> I'm just talking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I like that. No, <laughs> no, maybe I did, and I'm back again. I don't know, but um, <laughs> maybe I built Victorians in San Francisco in another life. I don't know. 
<laughs> but um, but no, it was uh, yeah, fifty thousand square. And like I say, it was what's cool about that is too is like back in the old days, a two by four was two inches by four inches, and you know nowadays they're not, and you know a, a, a you know in, any whatever it was. So they actually milled the lumber so that it would be just like it was. Wow, That's even awesome. the things that you don't see. Um, they bought a bridge. George bought a bridge, an old an old uh, train trestle that was a hundred hundred some year old train trestle that was no longer used in Northern California that was made of redwood. And I I was there the day when they brought those redwood timbers. They trucked them in. They took the bridge apart, trucked the timbers in. And when they did the first slice in the mill, they had their own, we had our own mill out at, out at the ranch and they took those and, and put these big timbers on the, you know, on the deal and, and put, and did the first time they cut, cut through it. And when the board fell open, it was the most clear, red, beautiful redwood, like you could ever imagine. And everybody's just like, Oh my God, this is just amazing. All the finish work, uh, it's all redwood and or a lot of most of it uh, in the main house is that redwood. They milled it right there at the ranch. Uh, they were, the, the guys that were working on that were incredible. They were artists that, that built that place. So and if you're seeing pictures, you can see it's beautiful. It's mm. beautiful. Yeah, I've and actually never Wayne, seen all pictures that Wayne's from inside. Coat. Well, all the finish, all the Wayne's coating on the walls, which you all, some people don't know, Wayne's coat is where the wood is on the out on the outside. You know, um, that's all that redwood that they wow. build. That's just that, that incredible, trestle. incredible, it and was uh, incredible. And, well, and that that must have been a neat experience. So, like, so for you yourself, though, is like so working at uh, uh, both Skywalker and Industrial Light and Magic. It's like uh, uh, for for both of those, it's like getting to work there both on the on the carpentry side and then you you uh, eventually got picked up on the uh the acting and voice acting side uh, okay. for, for for you yourself like like were there any like fun adventures or misadventures <laughs> no it was all a fun adventure my god it was it was like a time of my life and there's never been anything since to be honest with you i have there you know being part of of all of that. I mean, we knew it was, we knew it was something was going on. We knew this was special, you know, that what was being done. I never dreamed that it was as, as special as it was though, you know, how much people know it and love it. And it's become, it's not even pop culture anymore. It's culture. Mm -hmm. It's part of the world culture. The things that have come out of those studios and continue to come out. Um, it's amazing that I was a part of it. Well, I love, but, I love yeah. the fact, like you were telling us, uh, you know, it's like you, you as a kid went and saw these Charlie Chaplin movies and you're like, they made you feel things you didn't know. And you wanted to be a part of something like that. And, uh, yeah. and it's really neat that, uh, that you got to be a part of something like that. Cause you know, like kids, you know, especially like, uh, like, I guess like my, my era or whatever, it's like, it's like, that's what we grew up on. Uh, I watched the original star, uh, star Wars. And then I went and saw, I went and saw in theater, you know, like episodes one, two, right. three. And, and that, that was such a huge influence on me. And, uh, and you're part of that. That's why I was like, uh, you know, I just love, um, uh, I just love how genuine you are though. And how you, you, uh, you've kind of played all these roles that I really want to highlight some of the roles that maybe people don't know that you actually played as well. And, uh, and so, uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a picture walk here. So we're going to show some pictures and, okay. uh, and, uh, and, 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 and we're going to talk a little bit about your characters. And part of the fun is just like, uh, uh, you know, getting to hear, I'm just really curious to hear how you kind of created these sounds. Cause nowadays I'm in uh you know, I'm working in video games <laughs> and to me, it's like, I'm I'm so aware of these things that people don't normally think about now, like sound and how does right. that sound, you know, like the, Oh, in the, in the emotes or whatever. Well and, well, and I was, you know, and I was blessed. Uh, I've, I've, to, I've worked with sound people like Ben Burt, Matt Wood, Mark Mangini. These guys are, these are Oscar winning sound men. Like they made me sound way better than I am. And and I learned that early on. It was like I I learned that, man, the engineer, a sound engineer, he can make or break a voice actor. I mean, you know, uh, my favorite uh, voice actor was Paul Freese, and Paul had his engineer. To, oh gosh, I, his name just slipped my mind. I haven't thought. Ernie Facilius. Ernie Facilius was 
Paul Fries's sound engineer, which he would take to studios with him. So whatever studio they were at, you know, it'd be basically like, uh, we don't want your engineer. He brings his own. He's going to, he's going to work the board. So, um, and I talked to, to Ernie early on when I was doing voice work, Paul had passed away. Of course, I wanted to talk oh, with Paul good. and Paul lived in Marin County, uh -huh. I believe Sausalito. Yeah. Which is a lot of irony here, but I, I called him one time and, and I got a hold of him and I said, I would have liked to have met Paul. And I just want to tell you how much I enjoyed him. And I heard that you were his engineer and, and he said, yeah. And I said, I just want to ask what, if there's one thing that Paul would, would, I like this now as I've been in the business for long enough, 40 years this year. And I said, what would, what's one thing that Paul would have, what's one tip that Paul would have given me? What's the one thing? And he said, the one thing that Paul would have told you is don't let the bastards rush you. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah, they're always watching the clock, the producer, the director. It's money, money, <laughs> money. Don't let them rush you. You won't be able to give your best performance. And I learned over the years how, how true that was. So when I go into a Mark, session Mark, where you're, you're, like, you're referencing me right now, right? Because I'm like, I'm watching the clock. I'm like, all right, Mike, we got, we got a timeline here. No, it's yeah, I know, it's it see? <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's true. It's true. And I've been a producer and director. I've done things in my life too, where I caught myself. And then, and then that would go through my mind is forget the clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like if it takes an extra half hour to make this incredible, because what we do is going to live forever. Mm -hmm. You see, you got to realize what, what we're working on here. We're going to do it. We're going to get, and it, and then it's going to live on its own forever. So what's an extra half hour to make it perfect when you're talking about it, living outliving myself, it's going to yeah, live forever. I, I love that. So it's and, like, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I connect with you on that. As I really do. I was like, uh, from, uh, from that's why I love being an, in, I'm an indie comic creator. I became a bestseller through that and, uh, and, uh, through, through novels. But to me, I was like, that's, that's, that's been my mentality. Laszlo Nemeth, who works on the comics, uh, with me, he's my business partner. It's like, we're both that, that same mentality. And I just love that, that thought process. I think all creators are like that. It's like, let's make this as best as it can possibly be. It's not about the, yeah. the timeline. And so, uh, right. Yeah, well, so so you you got the chance to um to jump through and uh and create all these iconic sounds. So uh so here we go. It's like first up, uh I guess the bit of trivia here. I was like, these are all according to me, so people can fight me in the comments if they disagree with my ordering. Because oh, we're gonna go from most <laughs> iconic to lesser known. Uh, there's about ten of them. So uh, well, I so, hope you start with the one I would start with, or I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like. Well, it, it was a toss up for me. So it was, a, it was a little bit of a battle between, of course, like the two. So what would you say, Mark, would be your most <laughs> iconic? Well, that was safe. Let's, that was a lot safer. Well, Salacious Crumb. Yeah, there we go. I was like, we here we go. We have there's the picture of him. Uh, uh, good looking guy there, Salacious B. Crumb. And right, so, uh, he's very good looking. His mother says he's handsome. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so yes. first off, what is what does the B stand for? It's like Salacious B. Crumb. I've never known. Like, do you know? <laughs> of course, I do. The B is for bread. <laughs> what? Okay, Salacious. Bread crumb. Bread. Oh, I, I, I actually, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. I never, I never made that yeah. connection. I love that. I love that so much. So, uh, so we got to get the picture here with, uh, with Jabba. So, so there's Salacious and Jabba. <laughs> you had this iconic scene with Jabba and Leia in the, in the, in the uh, metal bikini. Everyone was like crushing on, on Leia. Right. And, but I was that kid right. that was like, that was like, look at that beautiful rat thing. I mean, I'm just gorgeous. Right. <laughs> and so, so how did you, how did you go about bringing Salacious to life? What, uh, what did you do to like, uh, for that sound? Uh, so uh, there again, I mean, Ben Burt brought Salacious to life. I, I went into, well, let's, let's start here. The first audition that I ever had was, was, um, character and I didn't get the part and the character, the, the character ended up being, um, E.T. So so I had a raccoon. I I don't know why. I, I, had <laughs> I love a, how I, casually I a, you say that. I had a raccoon. I had a bait. Yeah. When I was getting ready to. So I had this. So before I moved up to L.A., I was walking past a pet shop and I mean, up to Marin. I was walking past a pet shop in the valley in Los Angeles. And I see this little baby raccoon. 
And I'm like, oh, how adorable. And I went in and they let me hold him. And I'm thinking her actually, they let me hold her. And I'm thinking, well, you poor thing. You don't want to live in LA. You want to go up to Marin County. What raccoon wants to live in Los Angeles? <laughs> so, so I bought her and I took her with me and her name was Mabel. And I took Mabel up to Marin. And so it went out that, that, uh, that Ben wanted to know if there was anybody that had a raccoon that he could record. <laughs> right. And so it got back to me and I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Mabel. So Ben comes over to my house. He brings an old, old, a new with the, the nowadays, a reel to reel, a Sony reel to reel and a beautiful mic and all that. He shows me how to use it. And he says, uh, whenever you can get her to do some chirping and some of her sounds, I'm going to leave this with you. Cause she wouldn't do it while he was there. She was shy and Mike shy, I guess. He said, I'll leave it with you. you. Here's how you do it. Record her. So I was like, okay. Well, I had this thing and I was like, well, you know what? I always played around doing voices. I'm going to show Ben that I can do some voices too. So when I took it back to him, I'm like, here you go. And I said, and at the end, I did some voice. I hope you don't mind. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I did some impersonations and things. And he's like, oh no, that's great. So, so then he listened and he got back to me. He's like, you really, you're, you're pretty good. Like, I, I, I could uh, maybe use you for some things and I'll be calling you. And I was like, okay, I'll audition and see. So the first thing I got called for was, and I didn't know what it was. And I told my friend uh, after the session, she was like, so what'd you do? And I said, I don't, I, 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 he had me saying some kid's name and phone home or something. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, oh, I wonder what this is for. Cause everything's always a, a secret. Mm -hmm. Even if you're working on it, if they keep it a secret from what you're working on, they do. So um, when I went to the screening, because we used to screen everything, uh, the, ca the cast and crew, they would have screenings. And even people like me from, you know, carpenters, and we'd be invited. And so I went and I'm sitting there watching and all of a sudden the, this creature comes on. And he says, Elliot. And I went, <laughs> oh, shit. That was, I go. That was the kid's name. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I could have been that. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to be that. E.T. was yeah. my childhood nightmare. So <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> I loved E.T. So anyway, um, so that's how it and then he's like, after the screening, he was like, you know, what'd you think? I was like, oh, that's great. And he's like, Yeah, I found this woman that had that voice. Cause when I was doing it, he was like, it's not male, it's not female, it's androgynous kind of creature, and just come up just try some stuff so i did but um but anyway he said well i'll still be calling you did some really good stuff and i'm gonna be calling you <laughs> thanks time i got i know i'm making this a long story but then i then i get a call and i go in and i'm at the studio that i had built helped to build that i was a laborer on uh and at the kerner company in san rafael and i walked in i remember saying oh, wow, this turned out beautiful. <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's right. You were like a carpenter or something. I said, no, I was in it. I was, um, um, what was I? Um, the laborer on this building. And I, and I told him I carried the lumber in and the sawdust out and yeah, it came out beautiful. He's like, you hadn't gotten to see. It. I said, no, because they took me out of here halfway through doing the finish work. They put me out there at the ranch. So I have not been back to see it finished. And he's and Ben was just very like, oh, yeah, we love the facilities. You guys did a great job. OK, so here's this character for you. Another one that I didn't get. And uh, it, it was the, it was uh, it was on paper. It was Admiral Akbar describing how they were going to blow up the Death Star. Uh huh. And it was and it, it's the scene where the hologram of the Death Star comes up and he's pointing out how, you know, and yeah. we'll do this and we'll do and we'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I start to read it and it's kind of wordy and it was a big audition, big thing for me. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I started shaking and I was just holding the script. There was no, no music stand to put it on. It was just, here's the script, hold it and just try some stuff. Here's the mic. I'm going to stand there. And I got so nervous. I literally couldn't see the paper. Like my hand was shaking so bad. I couldn't read it. And I remember going, Oh my God. And I, he's, he goes, what? What's wrong? I said, I'm so nervous, which is why I don't let him see you sweat. But I was like, there's no way to hide this. Yeah. Yeah. I, was like, I am so I'm so nervous. I'm shaking so bad, Ben. I can't I can't read the script. <laughs> and he's like, it was just relax. It's no big deal. And I remember thinking, 
not you. You do this all the time. <laughs> I said, well, can I just do something to get these nerves out? And he said, yeah, go whatever you need to do. And he just kind of looking down at his board. And I walked away from the mic. I walked over and I took the paper. I started going, here's a script right here. And I started going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so I did that. I and uh, you know, and then <laughs> I and then I so I I really it it worked. It got all that nervousness energy out, and I walked back over to the mic, and I said, "Okay, I'm ready." And Ben said, "No, hang on a minute." And he came out from behind his console, and he said, "Give me the script." And I handed him the script, and honestly, when he turned around, I thought, "Man, I just totally blew it." Like I have totally offended Ben. He's going to say we're done for the day, but he didn't. He turned around because see, he, this is what he does. He he's always listening. And he said, I've got a, you know, what you just did over there. And I said, what? I was tackling and, <laughs> and he said, yeah, he said, I have a creature that that is going to be perfect for. Let's forget. We're just going to forget about uh, Admiral Akbar." Let's do a bunch of that today. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he just made yeah, you as nervous as possible. So, so that you get the right creature. that way. We'll get something out of this guy. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So then he said, okay, um, this, this creature is like part rat, part bird. And um, <laughs> he kind of described him a little bit. And, and he said, so I just want you to do that. And I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some direction and just, respond you know do respond to the to the things and so he did and it wasn't parts of the movie it was things to get certain emotions in that voice and we probably did about 20 minutes of cackles and things and well he, we didn't start with the cackles he, he started with okay you're this you're the little creature i'm talking about it you're out in the desert you're going through the desert you're trudging along and you see a big castle up ahead give me some sounds in that voice of you going through the desert, you know, so I think, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, like I'm going to go, uh, you know, and, and say, okay, great. And then and he said, um, now you, 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 you get under the door and you're in and there's a giant sleeping and um, there's a piece of cheese on his table. I want you to climb up on that table and get that cheese. So I, uh, I you know, and, and I got it. He goes, okay, you got the cheese now. Now uh, run and hide. So I did some sounds and then he, he says, okay, now the giant woke up and he sees you and he's coming after you and you're scared. Run from him and scream. And that, and that's why I did that, ah, you know, and I'm yeah. screaming. And, and, ah, and then uh, <laughs> he says, okay, the giant caught you. I'll never forget this, these, these parts. The giant caught you and um, he's got you in his hand and he just took the cheese. He just took his cheese from you. Tell him in, in gibberish, just make something up in that voice in gibberish. Tell him you want to give you that cheese back. So I remember going, <laughs> which I tell people, I'm like, so the scene where, where I, where salacious goes to the ceiling after R2 zaps yeah. him in the butt, yeah. after getting C3PO's eyeball, um, what I'm really saying there. And I'm thinking to myself, so they would have that emotion and I'm sorry, everybody, but I have a sailor's mouth and I, I'm literally thinking to myself, give me back that fucking cheese is what I'm saying. <laughs> but when you see me yelling at him at R2, for, you know, in the movie, I'm like yelling at him for zapping me in the butt. But really, I'm telling the giant to give me back the cheese. <laughs> I really hope they put that in the, uh, you know, in the subtitles when they finally translate. I want to I just want to see I want to see the full like salacious movie where it's just like salacious goes on these adventures of like, you know, fighting a giant and stealing his cheese. And, and uh, well, well uh, you know, it's funny you say that because. Uh, Kowaki and monkey lizards are sadistic creatures and they like to the backstory. They, they love to see people hurt. They make some laugh. And so I always thought I'm like, well, that's so me because I've always loved slapstick comedy and I've, I've wanted for years and I shouldn't say this now. Somebody will do it, but I'll say it. Cause I've never done it. I always wanted to have like uh what was that mystery theater or whatever. Oh, mystery with... science theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah mystery science theater. I want, I want salacious crumbs sitting there watching the three stooges. Like, <laughs> like he would think that was the funny, 
which I love the three <laughs> stooges. So, um, so yeah. yeah, I just always kind of thought like, like Mo would be like Robert De Niro to, you know, he, <laughs> Salacious would think Mo Howard was the greatest actor of all time. So, uh, you anyway, know, Mark, where we, we just curl. set up, we're setting up our new podcast. Now it's like me and Salacious watch movies and we're just going <laughs> <just joking. laughs> so to just watch all these guy. movies. Yeah. It's, uh, right. But, uh, it, well, all right. all right. So, so like, well, so I'm curious, last question for Salacious then before we uh, jump on. So, yeah. Just, and then, well, then, then let me say, so oh, then Ben took, well, then Ben took that sound. And he obviously, he sweetened it, he thinned it, he pitched it up a little bit, he sped it up here and there. I can tell, like, for some of the laughs where he, where it's more choppy, he, he must have chopped uh, some of the, some of the tail off of the laugh. So, uh -huh. like, <laughs> you know, so that's why I say I, I was, I was blessed. I mean, it made me sound better than I am. And um, thank you, Ben. <laughs> well, don't, every, don't worry. I was, like, I was like, we're, we're putting your voice through a voice thing for, for the final version of this video. So you're just going to sound like salacious the entire video. So it's well, okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you might, uh, Matt Wood might want you as an assistant. <laughs> so like, well, I, I, so I'm kind of curious for uh, uh, like, like which kind of came first, like the chicken or the egg though, in these, in these things, like, do they, uh, he kind of gave you a bit of a description, so they kind of had an idea of the creature. But like, did they give you like like some of the concept art? I mean, it was a little bit different then. They didn't have as much concept art or things, or did like? Oh, they had a, that... they had a lot. Oh, they did they? Okay. Oh, yeah. I was like, the for... it had already been shot, right? That voice oh, okay. that was one of the last things Ben did. It was, I think, I did that about thirty days before the before the okay. uh, release. Okay, so totally yeah, so it's all yeah. in that post up because I'm always curious about that. Like, which post. comes first? Like, do they change? Because I was like, I'm converting one of my novels into a into a big old comic, and it's like I'm finding like as I think of the visuals for things, it's like it's actually altering the story. So I'm always curious to like, does the sound alter the uh, alter the image of the creature sometimes? And it's kind of or which comes first, you know? Well, and so, so it it depends, you know. And things like this live action, we do the voice after it's been shot. Okay, in animation. Yes, in animation, the voice does play a big a, a role in the movement of the character, the facial expressions. The yeah, an animator will animate to our voice, and that will affect the the character. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm sure when Mel, I'm sure when Mel Blank, you know, when Mel, Warner Brothers, I'm sure when Mel uh, first did uh, Bugs and all every Warner Brother, I'm sure they always showed him first. Here's the character. What should he sound like? Uh -huh. But then once he got in and started playing with yeah, doc, and doing all, then that certainly affected the way Bugs moved and that attitude that Bugs, you know, he had a smart ass attitude. <laughs> so he kind of had a smart ass walk, you know, uh, cocky, I guess you would say Bugs is. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it does. So in animation, the voice does affect the look. And sometimes if when they see the actor, I know they've said, let's let's give that character a little more of this eyebrow or whatever of that actors. You know, I know like with the genie that uh, Robin Williams did, uh -huh. I know uh, he totally he played it. They animated to Robin. Yeah, that's cool. Like that. Yeah, that's cool. So. Yeah. Well, it's so. So. All right. So here comes uh, here comes the next most iconic role of yours i would i would say in my in my humble opinion i guess and so uh and so uh what, what would you say is the next one of course <laughs> absolutely here we have them. we got the gremlins. the gremlins and so uh continuing to uh you know as you voice all my childhood fears i was like i was terrified of et and i didn't even know you you auditioned for that i was terrified I of salacious breadcrumb and then I, I i was absolutely horrified of the, of the gremlin so so thanks for traumatizing me in my life oh uh, thank you it's been a pleasure yeah. it really is thanks for yeah Letting so, me scar your childhood, everyone, <laughs> or playing a part in it. Yeah, well, it, uh, but you do such. A, it's like you I know, love it's, horror, so it's fun to me. Oh, I, I, love I love horror too. Horror. I was like, that's why but I did I like, a zombie comic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a blood and gore horror guy. Yeah. I like the more like psychological. Yeah, <laughs> psychological. Yeah, it's, well, Hitchcock, which isn't horror; it's thriller. But mm -hmm. although Psycho was pretty horror horrifying <laughs> to well, me, I saw it when I was a kid, and it 
I shouldn't have. It messed me up, honestly. So that one mess. So psycho, uh, let's just get off the. So just, Yo, no, by all means, regress. jump into it. <laughs> okay, well, let's just regress here. So I, Psycho was on TV. And when I was whatever age I was, eight, nine, ten, and I was told, no, you need to go to bed. You and your sister go to bed. You're not going to watch it. But we lived in a little bitty cracker box house in St. Louis. And I could I could lay in my bedroom. I could lay and look down this short little bitty hallway into the living room and I could see the TV. So that night I wanted to see Psycho. I love Hitchcock <laughs> anyway. I'd seen the you know other stuff and I so I'm like okay so I laid down and I'm laying there and I watched Psycho that night and when my mom would get up or whatever I'd go jump in my bed you know <laughs> and then I'd come back out and boy that so so the just knowing how those things do affect us so the scene at the end of Psycho where they go down in the cellar and there's there's the mother uh -huh. in the chair and they, and they spin it around. Oh man, that freaked me out. I'm <laughs> laying there watching. Oh, it just frightened the hell out of me. We kept uh, uh, sodas and thing and, and food, canned goods and stuff in our basement. So we have basements in Missouri and St. Louis. And from then on, my mom would always say, Mark, go down and get a pep, go down and get the Pepsi or go down and get whatever. I couldn't go down there anymore. And my sister was younger than me. And to this day, they make fun of me that after I saw Psycho, my sister had to go down in the basement to get anything. I would not go in that basement anymore because as I would be <laughs> walking down those stairs, I could picture, I could picture that scene from Psycho. And I'm like, she's going to be in the basement. <laughs> it's just yeah. So I do oh. know, I do know how, how these movies. I connect yeah. with, I connect and, and with to you this on day, that. Well, to this day, when I go back to visit and I go in somebody's basement, <laughs> I swear to y'all, I still picture <laughs> Mrs. Bates, Norman Bates's mother in that chair. I still do. I still do this. It doesn't scare me anymore, but it's still there. It would still scare me. I was like, I was the kid. Uh, we had a babysitter, a neighbor babysitter, and she would show us either like one day we would watch uh, The Lion King, the next day we would watch Return of the Living Dead. And so it's like one or the other. And I'm like a little kid. And so it's like, and then Return of the Living Dead, they have this horrifying zombie named Tar Man. And he's like, he's okay. in the basement too. And so like, I, I, okay. I stay out of basements. My grandparents had a basement <laughs> just like that. And I'm like, here comes Tar Man. So I definitely connect with you. So, so well, so, so like oh going God. with the other horrifying monster of course like uh so tell us a bit about like so like, the gremlins I mean, yeah and you played like you you played like an entire cast essentially it's like you played, you played several gremlins you played uh yeah. uh some of the mogwai i believe too right and so uh yeah and so you um some of the other not not, not gizmo uh, uh -huh. gizmo is howie Man howie mandel howie mandel is gizmo and mm -hmm. frank welker is stripe and then i'm pretty much almost all the rest of the the gremlins yeah and you were like you're you like first, lenny so and... thanks well thanks to um uh the, the tony mcveigh and chris wayless they made salacious crumb and it was thanks to them that i ended up in gremlins because they were in a production meeting and it was brought up do you you guys made salacious and the gremlins look a lot like him do you guys know who did his voice and they said, yeah, Mark Dodson, he's a carpenter at Skywalker Ranch. And then they asked him, do you know how to get a hold of him? Because we think that we'd like to have him do the voices for the Gremlins. And he's like, yeah, we have his number. I'll give him a call. And I got a call from Chris. And he said, he told me what was going on. And the first thing that I said, I'm like, you are so full of shit. Why are you doing this to me, man? This is a prank. Because he said, yeah, you were... He actually said it in the meeting, like, you have been requested to do this Spielberg movie. And, I, and then I was just <laughs> like, oh, you're so close. Yeah, that's not real. So I thought, I'm like, so anyway, what's really going on? And he's like, no, Mark, this is for real. And he's like, do you want to do it? And I remember telling him, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm up here working at the ranch. I don't know how I would get, you know, I, I, I have to come down there. Lose money. He's like, he started to laugh. He's like. I'm sure they'll let you come down to LA to work on this thing. They'll understand. And you're going to make a lot more, a lot, lot more money in that week than you would up there at the ranch. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I guess 
real. And he said, okay, here's the guy you need to call, Mark Mangini. And I called Mark. And he said, yes, they want you. So come on down. When can you be down? And I went. And I was the first person cast for the movie. So, so well, for the voice. For the voices of the Gremlins. Yeah, and you had to play this. You had to play an essentially an entire cast. And I'm just blown away because, you know, it's like, they're not really like they're some of them kind of talk, but it's like they're not exactly like it's kind of like what you do is like salacious. So like how many giants? I mean, like to make them all diverse, because you did a great job making them all diverse. It's like how many giants did you have to cuss out about your cheese? You know, like, <laughs> I did a lot of I did a lot of cheese cussing. Yeah. For that movie. Yeah. Yeah. The things that were in my mind when I was saying yum, yum, and yum, yum, <laughs> all, the, all that stuff. And um, but yeah, it was. It was all improvised. Obviously, they can't script stuff like that. And the and the and the movement, the mouth movement dictates a lot of what am I going to be able to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, there's not a lot of articulation in the first movie. The second movie, they were more articulation, but um, in the mouth. So I was able to do more because I did Gremlins too, also. But yeah, that was that was a lot. That was fun and that was crazy. And and there again, you know, um, Mark. So how do you get that many sounds? You have a great engineer that 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 lets you. Then I would do I would do different sounds, and um, you know highs and lows and different things, uh, more gravel to it, more to give them. But then Mark would pitch some of them up a little bit. Some he left or just me. That's exactly how I sounded when I did it. And I can go watch the movie and go, yeah, they, they pitched that. Uh-huh. Or, and, they, and, and they like, there's a, the one with the popcorn bag. He's my favorite. The bags on his ears in the movie theater that does that. <laughs> you know, <but> yeah, <laughs> yes. they, they sped that up a little bit. I got to be honest. And I've never felt bad about admitting that because, you know, why shouldn't they, if they have the ability, if this, the effects to do it, you know, actors don't mind on camera guys. They don't mind being made to look better with makeup. So why would I mind being made to sound better with the technology that's there? I mean, <laughs> um, you know, make me sound better. Well, I'm just, uh, I love like, you know, it's it's just so incredible to me. You can go back and kind of like, you can hear those specific things as, as a writer, half the time I forget what I wrote. So when I go back, right. I'm like, Oh, I didn't remember writing that. So that's just too cool. I was like, all right, well, here, continuing our journey. Uh, now we're kind of getting into the field of uh, of the uh, of the mystery of what's next, right? And so, so yeah. next up here, we have a, a lovely picture of a uh, uh, from. Uh, here's another one from my childhood, and this is actually um, uh, surprisingly, actually, uh, you know, I actually learned that you did Salacious later. I learned that you did uh, the Gremlins later. This is actually the role that that uh, my brother and I, when we were at Comic Con, were like, hey. That's the guy that played Teak of all the ones like of Salacious. I was like, oh, he did Salacious too. I was like, so you played Teak in Ewoks, all right? You were the little yeah, kind of like battle for Endor, yeah. Yep, but you were a little fuzzy guy that would go. And I used to do that as a kid all the time. I would be like, whoo, yo, you know. I would like try to make the noise right. all the time. And so, uh, so like, uh, so here's Teak from uh, Ewoks Battle of Endor. And uh, you can actually see Mark there in the, in the second picture behind Teak controlling him, riding on a dinosaur. <laughs> so no, it's true. <laughs> and so what, what was it, what was it like getting to like, uh, what was it like getting to return to uh, Star Wars and, uh, and how did you come up with such a unique sound for Teak? Uh, that one I did get to see. They did show me Teak. Okay. And I got called back and I believe Ian Bryce had 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 them bring me in. So Ian was a, was a, was a production assistant that went on to be a great producer, director, or producer. Um, you guys know his work, Private Ryan, uh, Speed, Twister, all the Transformer movies. That's Ian Bryce. We were friends in the early days. Ian started at Lucasfilm in L.A. Parking cars. Honest to gosh, he, he started, he was at the valet and they really liked him. And he was a great guy. He came over from England and, uh, you know, they, they did everything they could to keep him here with whatever they had to, you know, green cards and all that. And uh, he's a citizen. He became a citizen thanks to Lucasfilm, U.S. citizen. And now Ian's gone on to be an incredible producer. Um but yeah, Ian called me in for that. He was a production. He was in production on that. And it was cool. I got to go back and we did it at Kerner. 
uh, over at the uh, in San Rafael. And I went in and they showed me the stuff. And, you know, I have that Ewok thing in my voice anyway. So <laughs> I had, they, they knew I could. Yeah, I didn't, you know, it's. But yeah, it's, uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was it's always fun to to know they liked what you did enough to bring you back. That's always good because, you know, you got a lot of people to choose from. Um, but yeah, it was fun. And I also did a lot. I never, I never really mentioned it. I did a lot of the Giants voices in that too. Mm-hmm. Well, they I actually hear, had. I hear uh, tell some, actually. Uh, you you also played uh, several of the Ewoks as well. Yeah, I'm background Ewoks in it and antique and uh, yeah, that was. It's it's all been amazing. It's all been amazing. Uh, it's surreal when when you see yourself and something that you were a part of, and then when you go see it, it's just it's surreal. It's, it's like that's not really me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. Well, uh, said- but it was it was fun. It was fun, and they brought in uh, some um, some of the guys that were the giants were actually big guys. I mean, they were huge guys, and I remember them. They, they, when I ended up doing, they were like, you want to try some of the giant boys? And I didn't, I was going deeper than they were, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, then, and I remember one of the guys was like, damn, where does that come from? Like, you're this little guy and we're like almost seven feet tall and we can't even get that low. I'm like, I don't know. It's... I don't really know. It, it comes from loving Paul Freeze like, cause he had a great deep voice. And I always tried to impersonate him, so probably stretched my vocal cords at an early age. <laughs> you just had that deep, like, inner anger about cheese, right? You're like, give me your cheese. <laughs> it's all about cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're just going to make a movie about a giant with cheese and uh, uh, cheese. Delicious. So, <laughs> so <laughs> okay. all right. So, well, all right, moving, moving up here. Uh, so now we're in the era of, of a lot of your uh, video games is as video games really started to start getting some voice acting in here. Uh, uh, this, this is a part, uh, so from ghost runner, the architect, I would say is, is one oh. of the next big iconic ones. Uh, how is voice acting for a game different for, for, for a film than for a film? Well, for certainly in my case, voice acting for a game, it's way more, it's very demanding on, okay. on the boys because we always have to do, you know, we die and you got to die 50 different ways. So, <laughs> the, the thing and also for video games you always have to do all the possibilities right so mm-hmm. so the script for for a video game is like thousand a thousand lines wow wow like you the one you lose your voice. About, like ghost runner yeah and i, I did a i did one I, I, there's been several that have been like a thousand lines that's huge i mean yeah. usually in a movie only a thousand lines but because you have to do every possibility, you do a thousand lines and wow. I usually want three takes on each line. Mm-hmm. So that's 3000 takes. Wow. I'd hate to be the engineer. That's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> like, oh my God, we got to cut 3000 takes here. <laughs> it's demanding. Um, I work with different directors on things. Um, they are clock watchers for sure. But I always just kind of, I've many times saying, whoa, 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 you got to slow down. I'm not as fast as you. <laughs> you know, I'm still a country boy from Missouri. You guys, you're in New York. And I, I don't think as fast as you. <laughs> so I was like, slow down. <laughs> I've even said in sessions, like, if this takes an extra hour, you, you know, I'll, I'll eat it. Let's just take our time here. Slow down. Yeah, so, well, it, well, and continuing with the uh, video games too, it's like uh, I guess going from the art. Oh, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. Well, it's, it's like, all scripted. Well, know? we have like uh, the next one here, right? It's like it's like we have Nancy Drew. We have two different characters actually from the Nancy Drew video game series, right? Yeah, we, have, we had we had yeah, there we go. I was <laughs> like, so we had yeah, we had Chief Chief McGinnis, and we had uh, Gray Gray Cartwright. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, yeah. So so what was those it? I did those I did with with. I do, I do those with Lonnie Manella. Lonnie was Nancy Drew forever until recently. For some reason, they did one of those silly, oh, we need somebody new, which yeah. they really did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. But I do a lot of, of video game work with um, Lonnie Manella. You can look her up. She does a ton of stuff. She's a voice actress. She's also casting and directing. Uh-huh. So she directs me a lot. 
Lonnie's got more energy than I could ever have. I mean, <laughs> I, she is just like, yeah, she's one of the people I have trouble keeping up with. And I have to tell her, I hope she watches this. Lonnie, please. You know, I can't think as fast as you. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah. Well, for for let's say like Nancy Drew though, it's like so you played like two different two different uh, big characters, right? And uh, and so how did you like like it's like you've already played a very diverse group when it came to Gremlins, right? But that's a that's kind of a very different role. So it's like how did you take these two two characters? And uh, it's like was it challenging to uh, to keep them fresh from each other, or was uh, is it just kind of like this yeah. is one character, this is the other one, and they're both their own thing? No, when they tell me and they show with things like that, they'll show us the character. They'll tell us about the character. Chief McGinnis was supposed to be a hard boiled kind of a detective, you know. So, you know, to me, that's what, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he's kind of a, the, kind of a, kind of this kind of a voice, you know. And then so it was like, well, what a detective sound like if he was this kind of a tough kind of a cop and he's been around <laughs> nice. forever, you know. I mean, I'm sure I'm drawing from things from my past. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, that's what we do. And, uh, and then the other gray, he's kind of a mild mannered. What is it? Wasn't he a, um, that was a while ago. I did those. The mm. what was it? He was like a scientist who ends up being a bad guy. Yeah. And you don't know it, but he, I think I pretty much did my own voice on that. I don't think I did much for much different on that one. <laughs> you so, pick the yeah. different times of the day like right when you get up you get to be the angry yeah. detective yes. and then as you yeah, go you can mellow out <laughs> yeah yeah but then the other one was he was more laid back well even the on ghost runner jack uh the what do they call it jack, jack right what did you call him on ghost runner uh the architect yeah the architect yeah he's in your head like he's talking to you and i i completely that was uh silence of the labs i don't know why <laughs> i was just and you'll hear a little bit of that in it I'm going to hear that right. definitely now. So <laughs> Yes, he's kind of right in here. And he's in your head, right? And he's telling you, you've got to go this way. You've got to do this. And it was that was really very much a kind of a Hannibal Lecter kind of a thing that I don't know. It just felt like that would be right. And I don't know. It, it always, when it feels like it's right, that's what it's going to be. Hmm. And well, hopefully and they like it. Hearing they you going to the... Hearing you go into these examples like just just like that is like this makes me so happy, Mark. I was like, I just love your 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 talent on that. So, well, here's Thanks. all right. Here's a super obscure one that I <laughs> so I did some digging. So you can call me out if if, if one of these is wrong because okay. I'm not so sure about all my sources. This is the least professional talk show, by the way. And so, uh, so and you got uh, the least professional voice. Actors, there we go. So all fun. right. <laughs> so. So we have a this one here. We have Star Trek Online. I love Star Trek. I played Star Trek oh, yeah. Online, and uh, you played Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I did. Yeah, and so That's like right. you're, you're right. honest, honest Abe over here. So so uh, did you like for that? Like uh, I mean, how did you prep for that? Did you watch the original Star Trek episode with Abe Lincoln? Did you like memorize the Gettysburg Address or something? Or like how did you no. prep for? How did you prep for for uh, playing? playing a real life person like that, I guess. Yeah. Those are always the most fun. So, <clears throat> you know, the, you know, Abraham Lincoln in, uh, well, I did watch the original episode because you can do that nowadays on, mm -hmm. on YouTube. Yeah. So I did watch that, but then I wanted to make him more. I always loved Abraham Lincoln at Disneyland. I was born. He kind of talks right in here. Uh huh. You remember. And it was back in the early days of Disneyland, there was only Abraham Lincoln. In the now they've got all the presidents, but it was only Abe. And I saw, and I went there when I was like 10 years old. And I always remembered that voice. And he kind of talked right in here. And I was like, so when I when I had the opportunity to play Abe, I was like, I really want to play it that way. I, that just sounds like the way Abe would have sounded. Then if you look it up, they say he actually had a pretty high voice for a guy his size. So I just kind of bring it up here and and I went along and I know he was I know I I did a little reading on Lincoln. Of course, I'd seen the link, the movie, mm -hmm. the recent the Spielberg Lincoln movie. Um, and I love that. And I know he was he was dark. He was he was living through dark times. He was depressed. He was, you know, so you've got to feel you feel those things when you play any character. You feel what they feel. And that affects 
consciously and subconsciously the way that it comes out and the way that you hear it. So, yeah, so I, I got to play Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Mr. President. Well, did, you know, did you get it? Did you ever get any grief or maybe you are going to get some grief now that people know uh, more uh, of that? It's like, did you ever get any grief because of the old Star Trek versus Star Wars <laughs> spiel? <laughs> Oh, no, no. I love Star Trek. I grew I was the first generation on Star Trek when it was on first ran on TV. I love Star Trek. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Trekkie, yeah, too, we, but I, I'm also a Star well, Wars person. So, well, that's yeah. So I'm both. I love them both. And um, that's always a question at Comic Cons. Are you are you a Star Trek or, or a Star Wars? I tell them Stargate. So then we move on. Stargate. Okay. <laughs> then they just punch me. You know? Yeah. So. Right. So well, jumping no, on. I like so, them both. I think equally, honestly. The funny thing, though, let me say about the playing that. That same week, it was like in December, a few years. Oh, I don't know how many years ago now. But the funny thing was that week, I played Abraham Lincoln for Star Trek Online. Uh -huh. And that same week, I played for, a, for a, an exhibit at the museum in Chicago. I played Al Capone. <laughs> Right. I'm the voice of Al Capone telling you about, oh, yeah, you know, I almost did Lincoln again. Yeah. Well, th that one, there's no recording of Al Capone. So I looked it up. There is never there was never a voice voice recording of him. But they described his voice. And I just thought how ironic that I'm playing <laughs> one of the worst people in history and one of the greatest men in history. <laughs> I don't know. It kind That's of, too much fun. <laughs> it was fun. It really was. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, here we are uh, jumping back on. We we only have like three more or so. Uh, so so people have to wonder, I guess, what are the lesser known rules? I mean, yes. you, you've had hundreds of roles. So I was like, I've these are just kind of picking out. I've yeah. Done, if yeah. you figure 40 years of doing this, I figured out one time, if I did a hundred things in a year, which I do or more, because there's, you know, there's video games, there's promo. I've done promos, trailers. Mm -hmm. Radio. I've and done so. Radio. Oh my gosh. And I've done... Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've announced for the Olympics. I've done uh, so much commercial work, the amount of commercial work. So I figured one time, OK, well, if I've done now 100 things every year in 30 years, I've done 3000 projects. Wow. That's a lot. And each so, one of those yeah, is like 3000 yeah. lines. So it's like that's insane. Yeah, it's like thousand, like yeah, well, thousands, no, hundreds no, of thousands good, of lines. The, the commercial work, that's that's fun. I mean, that's easy. You like you go in and you're in and out in an hour and it's a 30 second commercial. I mean, it's just a few lines, but <laughs> still it's a lot of it's a lot of production to be a part of. But that's, okay. Uh, yeah, the, so so going back to your old stomping grounds here, uh, uh, you in Star Wars: The Force Awakens, you played Prashi or Prashi, and uh, no, that's a misprint. I played Cretinus. Oh no, okay. Well, I know good. Where thanks you for read correcting that. me. <laughs> yeah, no, they need to correct that. Uh, I'm Cretinus, which is Prashi's uh twin like brother, companion, which is yeah. how they got. Which is ironic that they got it wrong because the backstory is they're swindlers. <laughs> and they use the fact that they are identical twins <laughs> to like in their, throw them off. <laughs> yeah, like like I make you a promise and then I walk away and then my brother comes in and they're like, okay, we're gonna do this. No, we're not. And they're like, well, you said this. No, I didn't. I never said that. <laughs> and they never let them know that they are twins. So they're that's so I thought how ironic that they got this wrong. You yeah. know that. No, I'm not Prashi. I'm pretending. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they did that on purpose. That that's what the, that's what we'll it, say, right? <laughs> right, right. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> well, so what was it like coming back to again coming back to uh, Star Wars all those all all these years later? Like, what was like, I guess what was kind of different in the process of uh, of like recording that that part? Was it was it different or was it just like it uh, like it used to be? No, it was completely different because um, with the, in the the early stuff that I did. It was just me, and I did it wild. I didn't do it to picture for Salacious, right? Now, Gremlins, we did the picture, uh -huh. and I was there, and Frank was there, and Howie was there, and Gremlins 2, we were all there. We weren't on the first one. Um, we were there, and we did it to picture. So, But, the, but, the, but, but doing the um, uh, Force Awakens, I was really fortunate. I was in the studio, the ADR stage, uh, 20th Century Fox, I think, and um, with everybody, with all the 
all the all the voice actors that were doing and there was like 15 of us um for a walla session is what they call it where you go in and put voice to all the characters that don't have voice and you do it to picture and then a lot of background sound and it's called a walla session because if you don't know if you can't come up with anything to say if you just say walla <laughs> for some reason for some reason in the in the sound recording it sounds like people are talking so they'd be like, that was that was yeah, in stage so, in stage in stage acting actually if you talked on the phone and you were in the background but you didn't make any noise it was peas and carrots so walla and carrots. For, walla for film Pe- and then peas and carrots 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 yeah walla 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 yeah and, and you've got several talking to each other because it's a it's a full room of whatever a restaurant because i know people don't realize it but like they where they use extras or the, the where the actors are extras it saves the studio a lot of money to have the extras not say a word right they're just they're moving their mouths but they're not saying anything yeah that way they, they don't have to pay on pay, for pay for the words yeah <laughs> as a day player as an actor as a day player right they get to pay it's really a low pay for what used to be called extras now i think they call them atmospheric personnel oh interesting <laughs> but um so then they bring us they bring voice but then they bring one voice guy or 15 voice people to come in and do the voices of hundreds of people hundreds of background there might be some close-up stuff like her tennis where they're like mark and that was really cool because matt wood brought me in for that and matt wanted the laugh he wanted the salacious crumb laugh because her tennis they go into Mazas and they're playing the game and he goes, <laughs> and, and it, that's what, and, and when we were doing it, it, it was quite emotional for me because when that scene came up and we always watch a scene and then you go, okay, what are we going to do with that? So when that came up and I saw him laugh, I thought, oh, I want to give him the laugh. And Matt looked right over at me, goes salacious. We need your laugh, right? Yeah. Here. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I got shy for a minute because I don't know. I just, and I was in there with all these really accomplished voice actors, young actors of today. And when I did it, after I did it, they all stood up and applauded me. And I, oh, could not. That was, I love that. I love that. that was because... it was really beautiful. Well, that's just fun yeah. and getting to, uh, you know, it's like getting to revisit that. And, uh, and like I said, you, you really do a fantastic job. It's so like, I would, I for you now, now I'm curious, like, uh, did, did you ever get a chance? Uh, cause I know in some of the newer star Wars, they wanted to like, uh, bring people like onto the sets. Did you ever get a chance to go onto the sets for, for any of those? No, I never did. I never have. And I'd love to work on some of the new stuff. So we'll see what happens there. But, uh, you know, the TV things that they're doing, but, no, uh, never get. I never. I never get to go on the set. Now, if they're talking about doing a Gremlins three, and if they do, and they call me to work on that, I'm going to insist that I get to come hang out on the set. <laughs> I uh, want to. I want to see the background yeah. Gremlin where it's like all the Gremlins, and then they just paint you green and put some ears on you, and you get to actually <laughs> be on the set there. with them. You know, they they won't they won't pay you to That'd talk though. You'll just have to. You'll just sit, sit back no. there and just walla walla. No, <laughs> so actually, but, I think it would be pretty cool to be an extra. I mean, to be an extra in Gremlins three and and do the voices for the Gremlins, but maybe be a patron at a bar or something, sitting at a bar, falling off the bar stool, or who knows. <laughs> well, but, you, yeah, I, I'd think, love to see you yeah, as that. a shopkeeper or something. They come in and talk to you for a second, or, or uh, yeah. I, I still, well, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still campaigning for the uh, the new Disney Plus show, like Salacious, Salacious B Crumb. You oh. know, I was like, I want to see the <laughs> so, you know Salacious B Crumb's whole series on on Disney Plus where he fights giants right. and. and and you know, gets his cheese. And watches the Three Stooges. And, yeah, he also fell in. It. <laughs> he also you fell know, into like, the Sarlacc pit. You know, after the at the after the the barge blew right. up, he he fell into the Sarlacc pit, and him and Boba Fett go on an adventure. So, anyways, right. uh, so all right, <laughs> coming up next, I love this one because I actually had no idea that you did this. And I did a bit of digging and, uh, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, because my digging, this is the least professional talk show. So we have the least professional sources. And so, uh, so, uh, and I love this because I just released my, my zombie comic. I love zombies. So day of the dead, you actually played, played, uh, oh. played some zombies in day of the dead. Uh, you're a huge part yeah. of helping to create, helping to create that iconic zombie sound, actually and zombies the have sound. become like uh has kind of become this big thing now so so what was that like getting to be a zombie 
that was fun. That was, that was out of the blue. It was, uh, I met a guy who, uh, who was the sound, uh, the head sound man on that movie. And he said, um, I, I'm just going to tell you what he said, it, because now you look back and go, boy, we just never know how things are going to be, you know, what the reception is going to be for things. But he said, uh, I'm working on this zombie movie. And I, and he said, I know like you've done star Wars and gremlins and you've done these things. And you may not want to do it. He was like, a, a, like basically apologizing before he asked me, he's like, you, you may not want to do this. It's a very B movie. They have no budget. And, uh, but it's zombies. And I think you could probably come up with some good stuff for, for voices for these zombies. And I said, uh, well, I mean, I don't just tell people. I, I said, well, I, I, what do they have? Like, what do they want to pay on this? He said, well, I would probably need you for about four or five hours on the ADR stage. And I could probably get you a thousand bucks. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going, that's a lot of money for four or five hours of work. Remember, I used to pound nails for 15 bucks an hour in the sun and the heat and the cold and the carpenters work hard and i'm i'm just like thousand bucks he's like yeah and i said okay i'll tell you what a thousand bucks and all the pizza i can eat and i'll be there <laughs> i don't know why and he's like really all the pizza you can eat i said yeah yeah th I'll, I'll do it he's like all right cool so i went over there and i'm working with george romero and he he's there and all the people the a lot some of the people that played zombies came in they wanted to try to do some of some of the voices bub the guy that played bub he did his own voice because i was told right away when i said i want to be him they're like oh no we've got the actor right here he's gonna said oh, okay but anyway um so we so i worked on it it was a lot of fun you know it was improvising it was they'd show us a scene i remember the one scene where the and i was doing it and uh the where the zombie gets his head cut off with like a shovel or something uh -huh. and and when we viewed it, i was like oh my god <laughs> like, <laughs> damn, that's some good shit there people are gonna love that but anyway um so i you know, i worked on it and had a lot of fun and it was came lunchtime and they said okay it's time for lunch uh, and so bring it in and they brought in they brought in a dolly stacked with pizzas like about five foot tall stack on this dolly and all these pizzas and they go okay everybody so part of mark's deal was in order to work on this film he requested all the pizza he could eat so we decided why not just give everybody all the pizza they can eat here you go <laughs> so so we ate a lot of pizza. It on looks like day. an actual zombie feeding frenzy, right? <laughs> right. It was, it was an actual zombie feeding fr frenzy. Um, but yeah, that was fun. And it was, you know, I mean, what does a zombie sound like? Well, my guys. Oh, yeah. They're always walking. <laughs> After eating that much pizza, they probably probably very did something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, pizza. Just very guttural and wet and gooey. And, you know. Well, that's one of those where you look at the picture and you just... <laughs> you know you start moving like that and that's what comes out <laughs> anybody would have done it that way right <laughs> so what, what what would you it say then the i'm curious because it's like you know especially making all those guttural noises and stuff that's got to be really rough on, on on your voice i was like i remember uh you know we used to say like you know it's like the audience will forgive you if you can't act but they won't forgive you if they can't hear you and so if you lost your voice that was the one time you were doomed you know and in your yeah. business especially like so like uh like what would you say is like of all these roles you've done like what was probably the hard, harder one on your voice uh believe it or not they're not that hard on my voice i uh i just i just um the voice since i was a kid <laughs> that was so that that laugh was really me impersonating my grandma that was her <laughs> witch that was her witch's cackle but that that's where i came up with that i learned i learned oopsie <laughs> oopsie gremlins okay the gremlin just got in there yeah <laughs> uh, uh my grandma that was her witch's cackle at halloween and when i was a kid i loved it so much i'd do it grandma nana we called her i do it nana and she would do it, and then I would impersonate her. I want to. She had the greatest witch's cackle, like best I've ever heard. I've never heard 
as good of hers in any film. And I told her when I when when Salacious when Jedi came out, I said, "Nana, that's really you. That's me impersonating you. That's that's <laughs> what that was." And I told her, I said, "You would have been better for the part, but you, you weren't there." So I hope you said, but, "I hope you said it was her witch's witch's uh, cackle and not just." Yes, her. I told that her. Was I me said, yes, impersonating that was, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I told her. I said that I'm impersonating. That was your witch's cackle. So, <laughs> but um, so I've been doing that since I was a kid. So I don't know. I just. I don't know. It doesn't uh, where I feel it is in my diaphragm and the stomach down here in the stomach mm -hmm. muscles. And every day when I would come in working on Gremlins and Gremlins to the director, Joe Dante they, and, and Mark Mangini and those guys, when I walk in, the first thing they'd always be like, how's your voice? You okay? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine. I, that doesn't hurt at all. I'll tell you what's hurting right now. My stomach muscles. <laughs> like the next day, I would feel like somebody had been jumping on my stomach because it's pushing from down here. It's all mm -hmm. it's all that diaphragm. Uh, I, I sang in high school. I learned how and junior high school and grade school. I was always in the choir. I love music. And um, so when I did first start doing voice work, I thought I should probably take some uh, singing lessons and learn how to do this without destroying my voice. So I did I, in Marin. I, I took some private lessons just for like six months to get the basics. And I was taught how rock and roll stars are able to do that, you know, and not tear up their voice. It's all about keeping uh, staying um, uh, hydrated. Very important. Stay hydrated. I learned right away how to lift the soft palate is what they're called, what it's called, uh -huh. where for everybody that wants to learn, you, uh, it's the same as when you yawn you're lifting the soft palate without intentionally. Now I can yawn at will because that's what you learn to do to open that up. So <laughs> the that entire audience it. just yawned, actually. <laughs> you, you lifted the <laughs> entire audience's soft palate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's, that's what you did. It's called lifting the soft palate so you don't destroy. And it's about loosening up and really be, staying hydrated is really important. Uh, but really, they don't. You're just doing a lot. You know, what's what's taxing is when you have, you know, like if I have a thousand lines, we don't do it all in one day. My limit's about two and a half to three hours. Yeah. Like, OK, we need to stop. Let's come back tomorrow. So I think like a thousand lines usually take me like uh, eight, to, I don't know, three, three, two and a half to three hour sessions. OK. Doing that much, yes. By the end of the day, I, my voice may be a little bit more, uh, more texture. It gets even more texture to it, you know. And that's when that's when you're uh, the zombies at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, that's like okay, let's do some zombies. Real quick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Uh, we're we're down to our last one. Uh, uh, so this was what I would say the most obscure one. I had to do a bit of digging on this. So again, like. I couldn't be entirely wrong or you can just pretend, you, you can literally tell me you played anything and I, I'll believe you. So, so okay. uh, but so <laughs> yeah. what would you say? What would you say, Mark, in your, did you opinion, like me? Did you like me as, as uh, Don Corleone and the Godfather? Yeah. I thought you were great actually. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you just use your Al you. Capone voice. So. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, so what would you say is your least known role in your opinion? What, what would you say is more, one of your more obscure ones? Uh, well, one that I love, but it's probably not the one. Professor Ulip. Okay. You know Professor Ulip. I don't know Professor Ulip. Okay, he's in. Uh, awesome I'm gonna, knots. I, I'm gonna. He's in. Uh, in, in. He said awesome knots. Yeah, it's called awesome knots, like astronauts. N -A -U -T. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking awesome this knots. up. So the audience is probably seeing a picture of this right yeah. now. I, I had it planned all along. I actually knew that. I'm going to cut out where I said. I, um, I didn't there's know. another, there's a commercial. <laughs> there's a commercial voice that people are surprised that I did the cuts on. Is it a commercial? This is a commercial. Monopoly. Mm -hmm. For McDonald's. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. We got, the, we got Mr. <laughs> Mr. Monopoly. Yes. <laughs> yes. The Monopoly man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God, I did that forever ago when I was in St. Louis. I, I went back to St. Louis for a while when my daughter was born and uh, because I wanted my family to get to know my, my daughter and stay back there a few years. And there was uh, back in the late 80s, 
there was a lot of and early well, I was there for a couple of years. There was a lot of advertising. There still is, but not the amount that used to be done. Like all the great Anheuser Busch commercials from back in the 60s and 70s and into the mid 80s, that was all produced right there in St. Louis. Darcy McManus, Macius was the ad agency. Um, then they had Bush Creative. And uh, but anyway, there's a lot of great advertising came out of St. Louis uh, commercials. And uh, I think it was Glennon. Doesn't matter. Nobody would 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 know. But an ad agency called me and I ended up doing some of the uh, the Monopoly man for McDonald's. I did a lot of McDonald's commercials. I did. I don't know. I think I did a dra- Halloween. I did a Dracula thing for him once. And I don't yeah, remember. I just thought it was I just thought it was, that was too fun. I, I really had to dig for that one because I was looking through. I mean, you have well, you have you have thousands of roles, like you said. It's like it's a. Like, so I'm like, okay, which yeah. one do I want to pick? And when Monopoly came up, though, I was like, I was like, Mr. Monopoly, yes, Mr. I Monopoly, like, yeah, I love, yeah. I, I thought it was fun. Like, uh, so like, 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 like when they were what, given, a, it was a giveaway that Monop that uh, McDonald's was doing. That you had to get Monopoly pieces, <laughs> and I was the animated Monopoly. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you prepare for that? Like, like, do you just like play some Monopoly and then like roll in a bunch of money? Did they just give you a bunch of money, and, like a <laughs> yeah. monocle or something? <laughs> yeah, I, I told them you'll have to give me like a lot of money. To, Lots to of really money and like all him. the free pizza. Yeah, I, I got to really feel like <laughs> like him. <laughs> no, that was one that he's an old man. He's a little old man. And I just it's just what I thought he would say. That's how it always is. I look at it and go, what do I think would come out of him? What would he sound like? And it's funny. I do that without even meaning to, uh, with people like in real everyday things. And I'll see somebody and think what he would sound like. And then I'll wait and hear. And I swear to you, a lot of times I'm right. <laughs> it's weird. Like most of the time I'm right. It's like, he does sound like I thought he would sound <laughs> or she, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, I i i i actually kind of like I, I have the opposite problem it's like i don't know what they sound like until they talk but once they start talking i start mimicking them like it's weird like i can't i like naturally yeah. start mimicking people's voice and i can't stop my i feel bad when like i talk to someone from another country because i start mimicking their accent i'm trying not to accent. like i'm trying not to like you know like be rude or anything it's just weird this weird thing that i do so no what, i do i know i know what's uh so uh, for commercial Oh, Professor yeah. Ulip is one of my favorites. So, because Prof- yeah, tell me about Professor Ulip. <laughs> yeah, so I've done a, a few characters for Awesome Knots. Um, and Professor Ulip, I did a really great alligator for them too. But Professor <laughs> Ulip was, uh, he's a little professor who's a time traveler. And they're like, he's, uh, he's absent-minded. He's like an absent-minded professor. Well, one of my favorite voices and, and actors was uh, Frank Morgan. Frank Morgan was the, the original Wizard of Oz in mm-hmm. The Wizard of Oz. And if you remember, the wizard, before Dorothy starts dreaming all of that, uh, is Professor Marvel. In the beginning of, of, of it, Professor Marvel is in town. That's where mm-hmm. she, and Frank Morgan, and I discovered I could do Frank Morgan working on a commercial for actually it was a it was a phone thing where you something with Kellogg's it was like with sugar frosted flakes or something and you'd call up and you could win and you could and it took you on a journey and this ad guy called me one day that I'd worked for on other things and he goes hey can you do Frank Morgan's voice and I was like "I, I don't know who Frank Morgan is and he said oh yeah you do he's the Wizard of Oz and at that time, there'd only been one wizard. So I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I, I kind of remember. Let me go rent the video of Blockbuster. <laughs> and and let me see. So I went and rented the video from Blockbuster. And I listened. Back where I come from, there are many great men who do many good deeds. Those men are known. As, you know, I'm like, oh, I can do him. So I called the producer. I called him up at the ad agency like the next day. And I, I was like, Yes, is it, you know, and I don't, what was his name? Uh, Jameson Braun. What a great name. I was like, yes, is this, pardon me, is this Jameson Braun? And he's like, oh my God, who is this? And I said, this is the Wizard of Oz. This is Frank Morgan. Of course. <laughs> I was doing, he's like, oh my God, is this you, Mark? And I said, yeah, I think I can do it. He goes, you nailed it. <laughs> From then on, I found out he helped me to discover Frank Morgan. 
that I could do that. So when I saw that little guy and he's absent and, you know, I was, oh my, now then, now then, Dorothy. And they just, oh, I'm like, yes, yes, no, I don't, you know, of course I do. Yes, no, go. yes. So I was like, he's an absent minded professor. I want to do him as Frank Morgan, but he's little. So I said, how about I do a Frank Morgan kind of voice? And I told this producer who, who he was. And he's like, and he said, okay, we'll do it. And then I did it. I said, but let's pitch him up just a little bit. And it'll give him that small sound. It'll make him sound smaller. So Professor Ulip on that video game, I love him. I love the way it came out. It's my Frank Morgan pitched up. And it just came out so great. I don't know. It's one of my favorite things to this day. Of all the voices that I've done, I love him. So if you guys want to go on YouTube, maybe you could find. Yeah, well, I'm I'm, I'm jumping on Elo and I'm going to find no. this. I, I'm going to find this alligator now. I want to hear your your uh, Frank Morgan oh, alligator, alligator voice. Yeah, English he's gone out. See, he's a, he's a real oh uh, smiles. I think is his name, and he's like, oh yeah, he's down in here. But he's got a big voice. They wanted him like, yeah. So, yeah, those smiles. Two very opposite characters. But, well, yeah. I love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm going to find these pictures. I'm sure our audience already saw these because I put them up. Well, uh, here, I'll bring it back to us. So, Mark, uh, it's just been it's been such a blast getting getting to to hear from you. I'd like to think like you know you started with, as just a raccoon owner and you you went on into this wonderful <laughs> career, right? I like to think there's this raccoon sitting in a basement somewhere, dressed up as the you know like the Bates and like smoking a cigarette because like you like you like took took it took the raccoon's role, you know, you 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 beat it in the audition, right? right? And so you know, like right? it's just like cursing you as it's watching all your parts, you know. It's like, I could have done Frank <laughs> Morgan great. better, right? Right. And so, but uh, so probably well, good. Probably good. <laughs> so, Mark, it's been such a blast uh, having you on. Now, uh, Die Ball Shrimp, we're a wonderfully supportive community. Um, for everyone watching this, uh, Mark's website and uh, and links are down below. So, if you want to book Mark for for a part, if you want to uh, see where Mark's uh, doing uh doing uh, uh different th things like appearances and stuff, definitely check that out below. Mark. How else can we uh, can we support you as as a community? Well, yeah, just um, go see the things I do, but you know, buy them, enjoy them. Um, come see me at the comic cons. I do comic and horror cons. Uh, I love doing that and meeting the fans that like the productions that I've been a part of. That's fun. I have a new uh, I have a new thing coming out. This would support me. This would help a lot. Um, because it'd be, it would be neat. I'm doing a, a new show and it is called, and I actually, I talked to, I had a meeting this morning and I said, by the way, I'm under an NDA. When can I talk about this? And they said, Oh, we just put it up. We're promoting it now. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's called, it's called, um, it's a whodunit. It's a podcast. First podcast that I ever was like, okay, I'll try doing a podcast a company out of the UK. Uh, the company is noiser. I'll be doing 50 episodes a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's who it's who done it. And but it's it's real mysteries um, from back in the late 1800s up until today. And I'm the uh, I'm the host. I'm the I narrate from beginning to end. I've heard some of what we've done uh, produced now. And it's awesome. Like the the sound they're they're doing all this 3D sound and a totally immersive stuff so when you wear your headphones it's it's really beautiful sound um and they're about 45 minute uh episodes and you can get them it's called detectives don't sleep okay and it's really it's really fun it's it's uh i've done several of them uh are already in the can and they they're well written they're they're great i love doing it and it's just me i don't have to be any character other than myself it's like Maybe after a after darker, fifty after fifty quick. episodes or so, it's like I think it's actually called Mark doesn't sleep. <laughs> it's like having to film fifty <laughs> episodes, right? And so it's like, a, but uh, <laughs> right? that, that, that right? raccoon that but raccoon is found. that raccoon's actually plotting your murder now because he's like, oh, it took it, it took my, <laughs> my 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 murder podcast role too, and so. <laughs> but uh, well, that 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 link might be down in in the description below. Yeah, we'll, put we'll that talk on. About I Jerry actually, so. I have it. I want you want to hear it. So yeah, go for it. I was in, it'll be in the description below as well. So 
How do I get there? I can't see crap. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> let's see. I gotta move this. I had it up here. Okay, let's see. Um, this may not work, but my fact where I come from, it may and it may not. <laughs> this may not work. Let's see. So let's see. Let's see. Here's the promo for the trailer. If it plays. What makes a great detective? Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. If you arrived at a crime scene, would you have what it takes to crack the case wide open? Would you spot the vital clues that everyone else has missed? Could you unravel the suspect's perfect alibi? And could you confront a murderer? It's no to all of those Introducing Detectives Don't Sleep, the yeah. new whodunit podcast from Noiser. Each week, we'll take you beyond the police state to shadow the real detectives who worked history's most intriguing cases. You'll be right there, solving a murder on the beaches of the Bahamas, busting neo-Nazi art dealers in the back streets of Europe, and unmasking con men in Beverly Hills. These detectives, they all have one thing in common. They can never truly rest until they've closed the case. Listen to Detectives Don't Sleep wherever you get your podcast. That's awesome. That was you. That was me. That was awesome. I was like, uh, uh, it's that's like, me. well, that's all. Oh, that's too much fun. So yeah, Detectives Don't Sleep by Noiser down below, uh, down in the description below. I'll snag that uh, link from you as well and share that out. And so definitely, uh, yeah, for everyone that's watching us, uh, support Mark. Uh, yeah, I've got all of his links <laughs> down there. And so I got a lot just, of grumblings to feed. I got yeah, a lot of Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one of us in the background there. Hashtag, hashtag support Mark here. And so uh, <laughs> we're going to, and, and his raccoon. And so, uh, well, Mark, Mark, Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for for coming on Die of All Shrimp. It's been such a blast getting to talk with you. Man, Josh, this has been great. You're a lot of fun. This was fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. For I enjoyed sure. it. Yeah, I and mean, for everyone watching out there, if you want to support this channel, uh, Diabolic Shrimp, I interview interesting and famous people from around the world. Uh, you know, hit hit all the buttons around here, the like, subscribe, ding that bell for noties. Uh, if you want to support me as as an author, uh, uh, you can find all my links down there below. We just released another zombie, uh, another zombie apocalypse. So if you love zombies, definitely check that out. But this has been another Diabolic Shrimp. Have a good night.